All right, welcome back to tabletop app design, where we leverage game development tools to create interactive tabletop supplements or apps, widgets, character sheets, rule books, you name it. We're gonna see how to do it all. So this is where I left off from the previous tutorial. So I'm dividing them. I'm recording them in the same day because they're good to do one after the other. But I separate them so you can follow me along carefully. So the only thing I did was shorten this box and this one too. So it fits while I picture The good thing is in your head is to picture a layout that you want for your app. So I'm going to copy and paste this box. So it's the same object, just a different instance. And I'm going to change the color to like, like a red, like that. So it can match this, this highlight. I'm going to copy the text, create another instance of the same type, of the same entity or object. I'm going to erase this so it's empty so it doesn't have a variable or anything so it's just the, the same type of text box holder but just no variable and no default text. And I'm going to select all my box holders, the first two ones, the middle one and the this one and I'm going to add an instant variable and I'm going to call it identifier with a number, with a, with a num numeric value. And what this is going to help us is to separate all the instances so that we can manually edit the text that is going to be within it instead of doing it by the boxes, by the, by the properties panel. So we can use code and we can use buttons and we can use interfaces to traverse or change the text that we display. I'm going to choose this two first one and I'm going to put a number one here. So I choose the first two boxes and I put number one because I want to tell the program every time that a text box has a number one, you're going to use the variable text. You're going to draw the text from within the object from its own variable. Uh, this one I'm going to name it number one too because I want to do the same thing. And this one I'm going to name it number two because I want to I want to tell it when the box holder, the text box object has a variable that equals to two, I want to change it manually. In fact, I'm going to change this to 2 and this to 3 because it's going to work better that way. Uh, so every time this 2, this this one, our 1 is going to read from the variable. This one's going to read from a button and this is going to read from something else. Now I'm going to insert new object. I'm going to go look for a list and this is going to hold our factions, our faction information. In fact, I'm going to lower all of this a little to the bottom so it's more stylized and more organized. Uh, and you can add items and separate each item with a backslash n. So I'm going to add mercenaries backslash n artificial intelligence backslash n military backslash n hunters backslash n and civilians now they're all here they're all ordered that's the easiest way because this editor is not that good the, this box when you click the three dots it's really hard to when I hit enter it closes so I cannot indent from not that I mean you can but it's not as easy as just labeling them 
from within this box and just putting a backslash in to to separate them so again this box is going to read from its own variable this box is going to read from a button and this box is going to read from the from the list and I'm going to shorten this box because it doesn't need to be that big it could be right right here and that way we can structure our layout better now I want to teach you one new thing and it's going to be right click you go to event sheet you go, you're in layout probably you're in layout then you go to event sheet right click add global variable Global variables are similar to instance variables. The difference is that they are reached by any part of the project, any layout, and they stick consistently to that number or string that you're using for that particular global. So they're global because it can be accessed by any layout or any independent of the instance of it. So I'm going to name it page right let's see where I'm going with this uh, now I'm gonna create insert new object I'm gonna create a sprite I'm gonna open an arrow sprite I downloaded earlier from one of my projects I'm gonna duplicate the frame going here in the frame and right click in duplicate then I'm gonna mirror horizontally with this button there we go. Then, very important, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to animation, click animation name, icon, arrow, animation, just to be clean. I'm going to speed, the speed of the animation is zero, so it stays frozen on the frame that I want, instead of playing all over, over again, or starting and then ending. So I just want to choose the frames manually with code. So I put the speed zero. I have the right uh, arrow, I duplicated and mirrored it in the hor horizontal axis with this button. Then we have our big arrow, I'm going to shrink it about there. I'm going to control copy, control paste. And I'm going to go into the properties panel and I'm going to put number initial frame number one because it's zero based. So zero is our first frame and one is our next frame. And I'm going to select our sprite in the projects uh, hierarchy. I'm going to add an instant variable. And I'm going to name it direction. I'm going to make it a string. I'm going to choose the right one and put right and the left one. And I'm going to put left. This will all make sense in a few seconds. So I go to my event sheet. I, before going to my event sheet, I want to insert a touch object which has the rules and code for touch behavior. And I'm using a touch object instead of the mouse object because the touch doubles as tap gestures on the phone and mouse clicks on the computer. So just with one object, we, do, we, we make the app work both in computer and in phone. Because if I use the mouse object, it's only gonna take input from computer mouses. And I want it to be able to be used in both. So more, more compatible. So I go to add event, uh, touch on touch object. Then I choose sprite. Then I add a sub event. Uh, I go into the arrow object and compare its variable and I check if it's right, then I copy paste and I check if it's left. That The only thing that this is saying is that if I touch this, I'm going to rename the sprite object, remember that, arrow, 
UI, I'm going to name it UI arrow. An untouched UI arrow, and if the arrow has a variable that is named right, and also if it has a variable named left. So this is going to work with the right arrow, and this is going to work with the left arrow, because we already named their variables like this. The, their instance variables, the right is right, and the left is left. So I go to add action system add to to the page uh, we name we name our global global number variable page because that's the the, the page we want to change with the keys so if I press right I want to add one number to the page if I press left I want to subtract one number from the page and depending on the page number we're gonna redirect some text into the box so that's done. I'm going to copy paste, enter, and I'm going to subtract from the page one. Now, there's a little thing here happening that if I keep clicking, the left arrow is going to keep subtracting and it's going to go zero, negative one, negative two, negative three every time I click the left arrow. So I'm going to add an event and say system compare variable page less than one so every time my page number is less than the first page i'm going to set the variable to one all right and now what i'm going to do is that i'm going to say variable page number equal to one and then blanks blank sub event we use sub events to keep it clean and organized uh, page number one so when every time the page number equals one I'm gonna grab my text box holder and compare instance variable identifier equals two so that one is choosing this box, this because that's the identifier number. So it's always going to choose the middle box when I compare it like this. So every time my page is on number one and my identifier from the text box holder is two, I'm going to set value box text. Um, we're going to make my life easier from copying this. And erase it from here set variable box text there we go but this won't work perfectly because remember in the other episode that we said that the backslash end worked on the boxes well, if you do it from this interface, from the event sheets, it's going to print out the backslash n instead of the new line command. So I'm going to do some things here, some little tricks. I'm going to organize my thoughts and see how I fix this because it needs a little working around. So I'm going to say set text uh, text box dot box text so every time my page is number one my identifier is number two it's gonna choose the, the box text I'm gonna give it the first instruction or I'm going to make this the parent one, like this, yeah, because that way I can create more pages like this and always refer to the same box. So this, well, I'll explain this in a second. So set box text to, and I also have to add one condition here, very important, and it's 
in the system menu trigger once while true because if not every time that it's two that means always because the identifier is always two because it's already def defaults to two it's going to keep adding the box text so i wanted to do it just once so i put a trigger once so my page equals to one i'm going to set my variable to to the instructions then set my text to the variable my text is my text is going to display the variable then i'm going to add a uh, wait for previous action to complete then i'm going to set the text replace so this is going to be used to replace every backslash n with a new line command replace parentheses uh, text box holder dot text quotation marks backslash n then we're gonna put new line so everywhere it finds a backslash n it's always gonna add a new line it's gonna replace it with new line and there we are done with page number one I'm going to do page number two. Uh, and I'm going to leave this as is, but I'm going to change the the variable, the box track, the, the, this, the variable that is going to use to display the text. And I'm going to change it to a game rule, any game rule that I just come up with, a new game rule. So taking turns turns then backslash n every faction has three has every player from the group will take a turn in clockwise clockwise order backslash n they have three action points to spend on fighting scavenging defending and and defending no I'm gonna add a few more Fighting, scavenging, defending, surviving. What else? Fighting, scavenging, defending, surviving. And reconstructing. That's our second rules. So now that the page is two, because we're going to click the right button. And the, when we click it once, it's going to go to page two. The box, the set box text is going to kick in and it's going to display this. Now I can do that again for number three. And I'm going to say the hunters have advantage over scavenging backslash n. The military has advantage over protection. Backslash N. The mercenaries have advantage over fighting. Just a rule. Fixing the gram grammar errors. Now, let's go into a bit more 
fun part, which is defining a text based on the list, the chosen list, you know, the list choice, the, the item that is currently chosen on the on the list object. So I'm gonna say list compare selected items. I'm gonna write mercenaries copy paste artificial intelligence civilians hunters and military and this thing over here is this case sensitive ignore case because that's what it, what it's going to do is that it's, it's not going to recognize if one letter is capitalized or not so it's going to read the whole word without taking in consideration capitalization all right now i'm going to make uh, an event that's going to say variable inside the text box folder identifier equals three and I'm gonna move this above choose this five events and drag them with mouse until they're children of this of this event so this is gonna relate this four event this five events to this first one so it's going to first read if this is true, then it's going to read if this is true. Then I'm going to copy the trigger once, put it here. So it's saying if my box, which is the third one, identifier three, every time, uh, the first time my identifier equals three, I'm going to choose that box. Then I'm going to check another object that doesn't relate to my identifier three box and check if the selected item of the list is mercenaries or any of this then I'm gonna text box holder set text then I can put the flavor or the instruction or the information of the faction uh, for example mercenaries are added at fighting defending and pushing forward in battle they have i'm just gonna have advantage over combat i'm gonna erase this because this is not needed I'm gonna copy this uh artificial intelligence artificial intelligence lives within circuit circuitry circuit circuit circuitry let's see how that word is spelled circuitry and can travel through devices expert at hacking it is expert at hacking and using technological advances. Circuitry within the circuitry. Copy and paste. Civilians are a mold faction. Civilians are mold faction. Are a, fa are a faction that you can mold into its best potential it is it excels at surviving and building strong houses hunters 
hunters are expert scavengers and live within communities. They can defend themselves perfectly from both zombies and robots. A military uh, are experts at defending others using high-tech weapons, high-tech and nuclear weapons to serve humanity. Uh, artificial they have advantage over technology they have advantage over adaptability they have advantage over scavenging advantage over protecting so this is just flavor and context of uh, game rules for example and this is like the equivalent of classes or factions in this mock-up game you know in this quote-unquote game uh, TTRPG app I cleared some events I erased the trigger once while true because I figured it's not needed so we're gonna test now to see if that's true uh, it was giving me an error with the trigger once while true here because some technical issue with how the variable is read but I guess if I take it out it will work so I hope so so let's test, test it out so now it's not printing the indentation and that's because I definitely need the trigger once while true but it's just here that I need it not in all events so I'm just gonna put trigger once while true trigger once while true and it should technically work boom the indentation is working the clicks are working so every time this is going to page two, page one, page two, page one. And if I choose my faction, it gives me my my prompt, my, my rules. So you can use all this information and buttons to create more windows, more layouts. I'm gonna explain that in the next video. But yeah, this we We've done a basic UI because all of this is just UI and you can leverage what we've learned in these two videos and do now you can do more things. You can you can use buttons to create pages and drop down lists to give you prompts of rules that you have for your rule book right uh, another thing uh, I can add is this one I could add greater than 2 set page to 2 because if not it's gonna keep adding beyond number 2 it's gonna be number 3 number 4 number 5 and then I it's not gonna work correctly so I just add page this maximum should be the maximum amount of pages you have here so if you have three pages this one should be three and set page to three greater than three and set page to three if this if you have five pages this should be page greater than five then you put page five 
and it will keep truncated the amount of pages that you have correctly. I hope you've enjoyed these two videos. The next one, I'm gonna go into dice roller and stats. We're gonna use similar functions, similar code, nothing more complicated than we have already seen. So what we saw on this video to recap was adding touch events that work with mouse and touch, uh, global variables, uh, how to create pages with a global variable and truncate it to the amount of pages you have, using identifiers to change text depending on various conditions, and this one is depending on the page source and this condition is depending on the list choice. So yeah, I hope this is simple enough to get you going creating an app that showcases your rules and that way you can play with your with your players on your table more efficiently. You know, save the environment, less paper. We're gonna get into character sheets that are functional with Discord. That's gonna be like the third or fourth bit fourth video. We're gonna make a uh, a character sheet that posts directly to your server which is super easy with this system and these rules and all of this i hope you enjoy i hope this is useful and see you in the next